Hi guys! So if you guys remember uh, from my previous video, I mentioned that Coach here in Malaysia is still currently doing their mid-year sale. So uh, during their first wave of sales, I actually got something from them, another thing aside from the bag. And I also recently got something from Cha Cha Fendi. And since I'm filming this video for you guys, I thought I might as well share my daily work bag, uh, what's in my bag kind of video. So if you guys are interested to know what I got from Coach and Fendi and what's inside my daily work bag, then keep on watching. So the work bag that I'm currently using is from this brand called Sometime by Asian Designers. It's a brand here in Malaysia and I think they feature designs from several Asian artists. I'm not really sure who the artists are but that's kind of their branding. Uh, it's literally called Sometime by Asian Designers. And the reason why I chose this bag was actually for a lot of reasons. Number one is because I was really into the book tote, the Dior book tote. But number one, it's too expensive and uh, a lot of people say it's very heavy. So I wanted something that was lighter. Number two, the Marhan J uh, brand is actually from Korea and it's really trendy in Indonesia and in Malaysia because of their signature tag. And this one, I think kind of took inspiration from that bag except they actually give you the choice to customize it with your name or anything that you want actually. So the shape of it looked like the Dior but the design looked like the Marhenje and it was pretty affordable that's why I decided to get it. It's available in two colors, one in the normal like nude-ish canvas version and the other one is in black. So during Chinese New Year, I know that they also released a red strap but I didn't really like that. I really like my black stuff so I chose the black. One thing about this bag is although it's advertised as a very rigid square-ish bag, it's actually not that hard. So I guess that's a pro and a con because it's super flexible. It's literally just coated canvas. And I guess it's good because it's light, but another uh, the bad thing about it is that if you don't really fill it in, it doesn't really keep its like rectangular cuboid shape. Also, as you can see right now, it's currently filled with all my daily items, and even then, the sides are kind of like bulging out. So I guess that's, I mean, it's pretty affordable. What can I expect, right? So in front, you can embroider your name, as I said and behind it's just plain black so another thing that i like about this is that it comes with a zipper so uh, on days where i want easy access i can actually just open it up to get like pop stuff in take stuff out so it's very easy and if i want added security when i'm like on the train i can easily just zip it up and it's pretty safe inside so let's open it up so I'm currently using the MacBook Pro 15 inch version and this one fits exactly inside this bag and there's actually a pouch behind. So inside it's one big compartment. Here there's a big flap, you can put uh, documents, you can put your laptop here. On the flip side there's a small pocket so you can put some of your stuff there and on the sides there are two compartments this is a bit it's a bit messy I'm not really sure how to show you guys this the, in the best way possible but basically there's a big pocket a small pocket and two pockets on the side so as I said my 15 inch laptop can fit on the fl uh, flap side here and actually that was another criteria that I had when while looking for a new work bag to use was that it could fit my laptop and because the bag itself is quite light it doesn't really add any weight to this laptop because this laptop is super heavy and yeah so it's very good that it's light so it, uh, it doesn't add any more weight to this so let me just take out everything that's inside the main compartment so inside my bag's main compartment I currently have these one two three four five six items so let me start with this one first. So I actually just bought this belt. It was pretty cheap, but I do need to add some holes to it. So I have it in my bag. I haven't had the time to like uh, 
bring it to a cobbler yet to add the hole so it's just stuck in my bag next we have a water bottle so I actually am not the type of person to drink a lot of water although I really should but I recently got sick and I recently had to take medicine and drink a lot of water so and this one was the smallest water bottle that I had in my room so I've been bringing this around I didn't really want to bring a super big bottle like a 1.5 liter bottle because my laptop's already heavy enough and I'm not gonna put a whole 1.5 liter bottle of water inside there although it could fit in the bag because it's pretty roomy but I just decided to reuse this because I already had it and it's pretty useful so always drink your water guys try to try to drink as much water as you can so that you don't get sick like me so this one is a recycled recyclable I mean it's a useful um, reusable bag from Daiso so actually I'm a very big fan of uh, cotton or canvas tote bags and I have a lot of them but sometimes it's really useful to have something very compact like this in my bag as well because usually cotton uh, and canvas tote bags I use them on like weekends if I'm not carrying a lot of things but this one I always have it in my work bag because it's very useful when I'm out shopping for like food or groceries or stuff like that here in Malaysia they actually charge 20 cents uh, every time you uh, need a plastic bag so usually when you shop anywhere they'll ask you do you want a plastic bag to carry all your stuff and they'll charge you 20 cents if you say yes so this one is just good because um, I don't really need to spend an extra 20 cents <laughs> and I'm also like reducing my plastic uh, waste so uh, I don't really know what material it is it's not plastic uh, I mean it's the usual recycled bag kind of material and I really like how compact it is and it's pretty affordable from Daiso it's only like five ringgit so five ringgit something so really really useful this one is a canvas pouch that I actually got as a free gift and I use it to store all of my electronic uh, stuff so it's pretty flexible and I don't really have to worry about like squishing anything so it's pretty handy so inside we have my power bank my wires my chargers I actually have another power bank inside there but yeah so usually I keep all of my electronic stuff inside this drawstring cotton bag from the face shop so I normally don't have a separate bag for medicine but as I said I recently got sick and I had to take a lot of medicine like throughout the day like in the morning in the afternoon at night so I use this bag I got from Kiehl's I really like the red color because it stands out inside my bag so I just use it to store my pills my medicine and I also have here something that we all really need to use especially right now. This one is a hand sanitizer that I got from my mom. So I use it from time to time. I actually find that I don't really need to use it as much because whenever I go out in malls, all the shops have hand sanitizer and even on the train stations they have hand sanitizer in the office there's hand sanitizer so I rarely use this but on the times where I do need to clean my hands and um, I don't see any hand sanitizer near me I do use this so thanks mom so last but not least we have this Kit Kat pouch that I actually got from Etude House so I purposely got this it's a uh, Kit Kat set from Etude House not because I wanted the eyeshadow palette but because I wanted the pouch so <laughs> it's a collectible and it's from Etude House it's super cute it has like a I wouldn't say like velvet but it it's it feels like a, a stuffed toy kind of so inside here this one is actually my cosmetics pouch so here I have my um, I wouldn't say daily stuff, but some stuff that I do like and I like to have them with me in case I need them. So let me take them all out for you guys to see. So first up is this Coca-Cola pressed powder from the face shop. So I actually very rarely use this as well, but I got it because it was collectible. It was so cute and I usually use it as a mirror because it has a mirror. So if ever I need to apply something, I want to check my face, I use this and it, it still even has the plastic. Like I think I've only used this a couple of times, but I keep it because of the mirror and because it's so cute and it's so compact. 
So next up we have my lip balms. So I actually really like the Nivea ones. So I have a lot of the original versions, but I'm currently using the tinted ones. So the tinted ones I feel don't really moisturize as nice as the original ones, but it does give your lips like a very nice tint of color. It does give it a tint of color, so it's really nice. I mean, it, it's also quite hydrating, but just not as... It doesn't last as long as the original version. And here we have one from Kiehl's, so it's actually a bit red because of the bag. But this one is a very nice lip balm as well. So I try to apply as much lip balm as I can because I have really, really dry lips. Next is my favorite lip tint from Dior. So it's the Dior Addict Lip Tattoo Longwear Color Tint. It's in the shade 771. So I really like the color of this. I feel like it's, although it looks quite scary and looks quite dark, it's actually pretty natural. So let me just swatch it. The texture is pretty watery. It's not too thick and it's not too, it doesn't set uh, as fast. So you have a bit of time if you want to like spread it or if you want to make a gradient or anything. So I really highly recommend this color if you're someone looking for a nice tint. Next, we have two more lip products. So this one is from the Patrick Star uh, collection. This one was the last collection that uh, from his collaboration with uh, MAC Cosmetics. So this one, the color is slightly darker. It's a my lip but better kind of color. And I really like it, but it's slightly darker than this one. So uh, this one is for when I go to events or when I want to look slightly nicer. I use this shade and it's pretty nice. It's a very nice my lip but better color. So this one is also a lip product. It's from Cheesy E. So I wouldn't call it a gloss, but it's kind of like a gloss. So as you guys can see, it's super red <laughs> and it's super shiny. It almost has like a jelly texture. So it has a bit of a cooling effect as well. I wouldn't use this on a normal day, but I just have it here because I like it. And it's pretty nice. So these two are my favorite lip glosses from Lip Addict. So this one is actually the transparent one and this one is a slightly pinker one with some glitter in it. So this one is really good because it's actually a lip treatment as well. So it's very cooling on the lips. It helps to plump your lips and it's super super shiny. Like do you see how shiny that is compared to like the lip balm? <laughs> this is so shiny. So I like to have this in my pouch just uh, in case I want to be fancy and I want to give my lips some like moisture, I want to give them some treatment, I use these lip glosses. But to be honest, since I'm wearing face mask nowadays, I don't really need to use any of these anymore but they are in my bag because usually I would have to. So yep. Yeah. I almost forgot, so this one is actually a perfume atomizer. So it looks like that. So at the bottom, there is this thing where you can actually attach it to your perfume and you can pump the perfume inside of this. So that way you don't have to bring a big bottle with you. So you can just take, uh, I think this one is 10 ml. So you just like pump, 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 and then it fills up and then you can use it whenever you want. So usually I put my Jo Malone inside here because the Jo Malone perfumes, they are in very heavy glass bottles so it's not really practical to bring around even the 30 ml ones are a bit unpractical to bring around because they're glass so these ones are really helpful if you want to bring some perfume with you so that was it for the stuff in the main compartment of my bag so now let's move on to the back pockets of this bag First up, we have my wallet. So I already shared a video on this. So if you're interested to watching my review on this wallet from Coach, you can check my video. I'll link it in the description box down below. So it's still in very good condition. I really, really like using this on a daily basis. It's pretty easy to use, pretty easy to access. And yeah, this is my daily wallet. This one I recently just got. It's a, a monogram passport holder from leatherly.co. So you can actually choose between two colors, black or brown. So because I love black stuff, I chose the black one. And it's uh, genuine leather. You can have your name uh, hot stamped in front. And inside you have uh, this 
compartment for your passport which there's also a compartment here if you want to put anything else inside and then here when you're traveling you can put your ticket here you can put important documents i usually just fill it with like contact cards and yep yeah. so this one is my current passport holder so as for my earphones, I use this one from Studio. it's the Tall. So the material of it is kind of similar to like the NARS, like black packaging. I mean, like, I, I don't know how to say it, but as you guys can see, there's a lot of marks here. So it's not the sleekest and the cleanest material to make an earphone case with, I think, but it's okay, it still looks good. So it has this um, strap at the side, which is not detachable. And then inside we have my wireless earphones. I quite like these ones and I usually wear them out when I'm outside like on the train, in a mall because they're really really light and I usually just don't want to talk to anybody so I usually have these on my in my ears. And that was it for the stuff on the back pocket. Now let's move on to the ones on the sides. So here we have my umbrella. Again, it's black because I love black. An umbrella is actually really like needed if you live in Malaysia because the weather can be so fickle. Because one day it'll be super hot. I mean, usually in a in Southeast Asia it's super hot and sunny, so you will need an umbrella anyway. But in Malaysia, I feel like it the rain just comes out of nowhere. So whether rain or like super sunny or shine, you will really need an umbrella. So this one is really an essential in my work bag. This one is actually a roller perfume from. From Versace it's the uh, bright crystal absolute so I really like this scent I got it last year for Christmas but the thing that I don't like about this perfume is that it's the packaging is a bit faulty and even that like even if I get that to open it leaks like it smells amazing but it leaks really easily. So that's why I have it separate from my uh, cosmetics pouch. So I just put it on the side because as it leaks slowly, at least my bag smells good. I can't do anything about it. Even if I close this really tight, it's still very oily and it still leaks. So I just keep it on the side of my bag for like, so that I always smell fresh because I always carry my work bag with me anyway. So everyone's gonna smell this. So this is what makes my bag smell so good. Masks are super important now that we're living in this pandemic and there are still some days when I forget to wear mask out of the house because you know we're not it's just because we're not really that used to wearing masks in Southeast Asian countries compared to like Japan or Korea where they're used to like find us and all that and wearing mask is quite normal to them in Malaysia it's not normal because the weather here is so hot and sometimes I when I'm out of the house I'm halfway to work already and I'll think oh my god I forgot to bring a mask so I have a pack of masks in my bag um, just in case I forget and I have some chopsticks I'm not really sure why I have why I keep them recently there's this place that's been selling really affordable Japanese food and they whenever I dine in they give me like cutlery spoon and fork and they give me chopsticks but I don't eat my rice with chopsticks so and I already touched it and they already gave it to me it's already on my table so just so that it doesn't go back and they don't give it to another customer and like risk the uh, risk of contaminating them I just take them with me because I mean I might find them useful someday so but yeah they're in my bag and that was it for my what's in my work bag video I know this angle is not really the best but this bag is so big that like I just didn't know how I could film it. It's not the most aesthetic what's in my bag video out there on YouTube but um, I thought it would be fun to do so that's what was inside my work bag. So I'm gonna change the camera angle later when we get to the Fendi but because the coach is also quite big I'm gonna stick to this so please bear with this angle a bit more. So uh, as I mentioned uh, coach is still having a sale and I saw these shoes and they were quite affordable so I decided to get them. So this is what the box looks like. Uh, if you guys remember from my tabby unboxing video I mentioned that the box was a bit like lackluster. I mean you can actually still see it here so it doesn't stick and actually the uh, after talking to the coach people they said that they were actually aware of the box issue and they were already told their management that they needed new boxes but because of the pandemic they can't really create new boxes something like that so I guess we're all stuck with boxes like this in the moment so I mean not a big deal but like I just thought I'd mention that if I remember correctly these ones are the C143 trainers 
trainers, I think that's what they're called. And I actually saw them in a pavilion. And the color was super unique and I really liked it. It came in my size, number one. Number two, I quite like the uh, burgundy and the olive green and the C logo and the color, the tan. So I decided to get it. So I am in a size. Eight, I think so I really like the look of these it's actually a mix of a lot of different materials here we have a the burgundy part is actually suede leather this one is normal like fabric like how sneakers usually uh, come with fabric there's also their coach canvas here and yeah so it's just a mess of colors to be honest and I really liked it so I really like the look of this uh, I haven't worn it yet just because of the suede leather in front so I'm gonna have to get those like uh, anti dirt waterproof kind of sprays to like protect it a bit but uh, I will start using them when I get that spray so stay tuned on my I don't know my Instagram so the inside of these shoes are purple the tongue is actually also made of canvas. The back has this thing. I'm not really sure what it's for. Like, am I supposed to hang like keychains here? I'm not. I'm not sure. And the this is what the bottom looks like. It says Coach, and it has the horse and carriage logo there as well. Who knows if I'll hate them in the future? Who knows if I'll hate them next month? But as of right now, I really like this, these shoes. So. Love it. Cha -cha. Finally, what everybody has been waiting for. So my Fendi unboxing. No, ah, Roma. So there's actually a background story to why I bought. Ayo, to why I bought this thing from Fendi. So if you guys didn't already know, uh, Chanyo from EXO is actually one of the models for this perfume brand called Aqua di Parma and he did a couple of photo shoots for W magazine for to promote this perfume quite a few times actually in a few different uh, issues so in one of the issues they actually have a behind the scenes I forgot where they went but I was watching the behind the scenes of it and in this video if you guys can see he's actually wearing the necklace it's so small I don't know how I even like saw that but it really caught my eye it was very vintage looking and it looks super super cute so he was wearing it while they were like shooting and I really could not take my eye off it so I couldn't stop thinking of that necklace for months for weeks for months for days and the most annoying thing is the picture that made the cut for the magazine that month didn't even show the necklace but I still couldn't stop thinking about it. So one day I was in KLCC and I just decided to drop by Fendi and I saw that the necklace was there. And since it was already one year old and only one stock left, I would never be able to see it again. And then this happened. <laughs> so that's why I bought from Fendi. So before we open it, let's just admire the beautiful yellow of Fendi, Roma, Fendi. So because I bought something from the Carligraphy line of products, they actually gave the paper bag like this super cute Carligraphy magnet thing. So at first I thought it was a sticker, but it's actually a magnet. So it's kind of cute. So maybe I'll use this to like keep some papers together, but it's pretty cute, pretty nice. So, so let's open it. So inside the paper bag, I have two items. So this one contains the necklace, and this one is the uh, receipt. So it's pretty big. So yes, uh, here in Malaysia, it cost oh my god, a thousand eight hundred fifty. Did I really spend a thousand eight hundred fifty for a necklace? <laughs> because of Chanyo. So I do want to highlight though that the Fendi staff in KLCC was super super like friendly I mean it was so obvious that I could not afford their bags <laughs> but when I went in they were super friendly they really really were trying to help me find the item that I was looking for and they were even like suggesting other things to pair it with they were so friendly 
Uh, unfortunately, I can't afford anything else in that store, but I really just wanted to, I really had a good time in the Fendi store, so I really just wanted to highlight that to you guys as well. I think if you're getting into luxury items like me as well, it can be quite intimidating to like step into these kinds of stores because there's like a perception where like only the rich stay, uh, go inside there and there's like um, the sales assistant are pretty snobby and they won't serve you because you're not rich kind of that like that mentality but so far from my experience none I haven't had like a very bad experience at all like going into luxury shops and so far everyone's been friendly and the so far the best uh, customer service that I got so far was from the coach store and the Fendi store. They were really super friendly. So this is what the box looks like. Let's open it. It's made of like some really nice like velvety fabric. So this is what the necklace looks like. So as I mentioned, this one is part of the calligraphy line. So this calligraphy, it's like calligraphy, but Karl, Karl Lagerfeld calligraphy, do you get it? So basically he made this like cursive calligraphy logo a few years back and he brought it back into a few designs before he passed away. So I'm not sure if this, I think this one was released after he died, but I'm not sure if he designed it because because from what i remember he passed away last around the around january last year and this one was released around june july so i'm not sure if this one was part of the collection as a tribute to him if he designed it i'm not sure but we're here calligraphy calligraphy so that, so basically that's the background of this necklace so it looks quite vintage the style of it looks kind of vintage like you know those victorian necklaces like oval kind of things actually I, at first i thought it was a locket but it's actually not a locket it's just a solid pendant so it's actually supposed to be a vintage style so it's not supposed to be perfect like it's not supposed to be super smooth so let me show you guys the back so that's they intentionally made it like that so that it has a very vintage feel so at the back it just says Fendi made in Italy I think yeah made in Italy it's a really really nice necklace and I have zero regrets about buying it I was just like after I bought it I was like did I did Chanyo really make me buy this necklace I just saw it for a few seconds on him it's not even his it was probably the stylist's choice to like just put it on him and it didn't even make the final photo, the cut for the magazine, but I, uh, this this is the influence of celebrity. So the pendant doesn't actually move, it's set there, and the chain is golden, and this is what the lock looks like. It's not a clasp, so it's very easy to put on, so you just pull it through, and it's locked already and actually it's a pretty long necklace so it's pretty good to pair with like basic stuff like shirts t-shirts because there is no clasp you can actually have the option of shortening it wearing it shorter like that as well so yeah that was it for this pretty short unboxing of this necklace that I didn't need in my life but I was obsessing over and I finally got. It was so hard to look for this necklace online and that made me fall in love with it even more because like it's so unique that only a few people have it so I guess that's what uh, that's another thing that made me drawn to this necklace. So here is the necklace again in all its pretty vintage looking but not really vintage glory so i will forever think of this necklace as the chanel necklace <laughs> the, ch the necklace that chanel made me buy so it's not the calligraphy one anymore it's so pretty and i can't wait to start using it so i hope you guys enjoyed my very first fendi unboxing so i hope this video wasn't too long and that you guys are still there watching it um i probably will put a very clickbaity title to entice people to watch this i bought chanel's necklace but yeah so i uh, thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you guys found it um enjoyable and fun to watch so sorry if it's not the most aesthetically pleasing video that i've ever made or that's on youtube but it's a weekend i was bored and i thought this would be 
quite fun to share about. So if you guys enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up and to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!